Guys, hey, how's it going? It's Bill here with Film Hook again. I'm kind of taking you all over the house now at the moment. You're in my bedroom at the moment. Um, ladies, please calm down. Um, this is going to be a bit of a different episode because what I want to talk about is the Oscar nominations. They've just been announced and uh, there's there, there aren't very many surprises. It's been a great year for film in 2013. So the Oscars really reflect that. There's no one film is really outstanding um, of other over than other over anything else and um, we've got some great films like 12 Years a Slave, American Hustle, Dallas Buyers Club and they're all vying for uh, vying for the uh, the statuettes uh, in a couple of weeks time. Now what I thought I'd do is I basically just uh, give you my predictions. I'm not going to go through sort of what the nominees are because you can check those out online. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a list and the rundown of who I think is going to win and then Come February when the awards are announced, I'm going to do a bit of a recap and see whether I was right or not. Now these are personal preferences. Some are personal, some are kind of you know what I think are sort of you know the the uh, the films which deserve it. But um, I hope you kind of check it out and see what you think. And uh, pop me some comments down below and let me know what you think as well. Let me know if you think they're right. Let me know if you think maybe that like somebody else should win, or maybe there was a couple of snubs, uh, people who didn't get nominated or films who didn't get nominated that you thought maybe should have. Anyway, guys, on with the show. Okay, so first things first, uh, the first thing I'm going to look at is the best picture. Now, there's some great nominees in for this. My prediction for the best picture is 12 Years a Slave. Uh, the Steve McQueen directed movie was out in Ireland um, uh, only last week. It was out in the uh, US last October. Uh, this was a very powerful, a very emotional film. Check out my review on my channel um, to see what I thought of it. I thought the film was absolutely fantastic. It made for uncomfortable viewing, as does a lot of Steve McQueen's movies, but it's absolutely worthy. It's completely worthwhile, and I really feel you know given the crop of the films which are up uh, for the Oscar this year for best picture while they're all sort of worthy in their own way this is very weighty it's very dramatic it's very emotional very powerful and I think uh, you know out of all of the nominees this deserves the best picture over anything else okay in terms of best actor um prior to you know kind of seeing it i would have uh, been saying you know maybe duet led you for in 12 years a slave but uh, as well with the golden globes and another couple of awards i'd love to see matthew mcconaughey win the best actor award for the dallas buyers club and um, he lost a lot of weight to do this they found it a really difficult movie to make because you know they they only had like 25 days filming they'd film with all the available light it was very difficult for them to get the film made in the first place it was 20 years in development hell almost so i'd love to see matthew McConaughey take hold the, home the, the Oscar for Best Actor. In terms of Best Actress, a um, couple of great performances here as well. Love Judy Dench and Philomena. But overall, out of all the, um, I suppose, kind of films last year, the one that stood out in my head the most was Kate Blanchett in Blue Jasmine. Very powerful performance. She looked fantastic in the role. Uh, she really got, she, it was a very nuanced performance. I thought she was fantastic and I think she thoroughly deserves the Oscar for Best Actress. Best Supporting Actor. This is a difficult one now um, because um, I'm going to break with a little bit of tradition here. I think a couple of people are saying maybe you should be Jared letter or somebody like that for Dallas, Dallas Buyers Club. I loved Captain Phillips last year um, and I thought Barkat Abdi was fantastic in the role. Um, it's his first film. Um, I, I, I think he thoroughly deserves a uh, Best Supporting Actor. In terms of Best Supporting Actress, um, Jennifer Lawrence was excellent in American Hustle, but for me, my money is on Lupita Nyong'o for her role as Patsy, uh, one of the slaves in 12 Years a Slave. I found her performance to be uh, very, very beautiful, very, uh, very powerful in a very quiet way. She played a character who was at once fragile um, and childlike, but she also had like an inner strength to her, which I think really came across on the screen. I loved her performance. Uh, there's one scene in it where she gets whipped, and it's shortly after that, I actually did. I shed a tear in relation to that. I thought her acting was beautiful, and it was very, very touching in this. I thought I think she thoroughly deserves Best Actress uh, for in the sporting role. Okay, in terms of animated feature, what are my picks? I'm going I find this one a bit difficult because the film I loved most last year in terms of animation was Frozen. The Disney film, um, it, it was absolutely fantastic. I loved the animation, I loved the songs, I thought it was absolutely charming. I loved it to pieces, loved it, loved it, loved it, 110%. thought it was fantastic. Um, I'm going to say that's going to be my uh, animated film um, prediction. However, I would sort of put in brackets after that, The Wind Rises. Uh, by uh, Studio Ghibli and Hayao Miyazaki. The gong might go to Hayao Miyazaki because he, he has said that this is his final directorial feature and um, Studio Ghibli haven't won an animated Oscar since uh, 2000's, 2001's Spirited Away, which is one of my favorite animated films of all time. So I would like to see them win it, but I think Frozen will win it. Okay, in terms of best director, um, you know, there are a couple of great, you know, uh, I, I'd love to see Martin Scorsese win it for Wolf of Wall Street, uh, Steve McQueen for 12 Years a Slave, uh, 
Um, there's a lot of horses in this race, but I definitely think with the amount of uh, detail that's gone into the film and the nature of the film, I think Alfonso Cuaron is going to run away with uh, with Gravity and Best Director nod here. In terms of, actually, it takes on to the next category, the next one, Cinematography, I think Gravity. Costume Design, I'm going to go with Great Gatsby, and that was uh, Catherine Martin. In terms of documentary feature, there were some great documentaries out last year. One of the ones which I was most annoyed that didn't get uh, a nomination was Blackfish. I thought Blackfish was an incredible documentary, an incredible indictment of the treatment of uh, whales in captivity uh, at SeaWorld and other places. I thought it was powerful and raw. I thought it was visceral and I thought it was a fantastic documentary. I was really, really annoyed that it didn't get an Oscar nomination because uh, it was one of my films of the year last year as well. But I think the film which is going to take the poem to the gong for best documentary is um, uh, The Act of Killing. Okay, I think the, the best editing is going to go to Joe Walker for 12 Years of Slave. In terms of best foreign language film, this is one of my favourite categories. I'm constantly telling people to check out foreign movies because there's some great cinema out there. And, you know, anyone who knows me personally will know I have great love for foreign cinema, Asian in particular, Italian, German, French, whatever, uh, but in particular Asian. Uh, but I think that, that the uh, the word is going to go to Paolo, Paolo Sorrentino's film, The Great Beauty or The Gran Bellezza. Fabulous film, really intoxicating movie to watch. Absolutely adored it. I think this is going to be. I, th I thought it was quite odd that you know Blue is the Warmest Color didn't get a nomination, but I definitely think The Great Beauty is a much, much better film. It's a much more beautiful film. It's shot more subtly, beautiful color palette, really evocative of Rome. Absolutely stunning film, really enjoyed it. Okay, so um, another a uh, couple of these um, Oscar nom predictions now are going to be for the more technical awards, so I'm just going to read them off. Um, I think for best makeup, we're looking at Dallas Buyers Club. I think um, in terms of best music, I'm going to go with um, uh, Thomas Newman here for Saving Mr. Banks, because I loved the music from Saving Mr. Banks. Uh, in terms of music original song, I'm going to go with uh, the Idina Menzel uh, song, Let It Go from Frozen. Uh, I was very annoyed that that didn't win uh, Golden Globe for best, uh, best original song, it went to U2, Ugh. which was a god awful song from Mandela. But anyway, um, hopefully Let It Go will win that. Production design, gravity, short film going to go with Get a Horse, which was the uh, which was uh, sort of the introduction to Frozen. Uh, sound editing, all is lost. Uh, sound mixing, I'm going to go for The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug, which was my film of the year last year. Uh, visual effects, gravity, it has to be gravity. Uh, best adapted screenplay, I'm actually going to go with The Wolf of Wall Street. And then for original screenplay, I'm going to go with uh, Spike Jones and her. So guys, those are my predictions for the Oscars 2014. We've only a couple of weeks to go. I'm really excited about this because unlike previous years, there are no clear sort of front runners in these races. There's a number of completely worthy nominees in each category. And there's there are none of these films which I would be uh, upset about you know them winning. I, I'd love to see them all get awards. It's been a fantastic year for film. I'd love you to check back in a couple of weeks time when the award ceremony takes place and see whether I was right or whether I was really, really wrong. Um, but anyway, guys, listen, uh, I'll check you next time. It's Bill with Film Hook here. And uh, yeah, take care. Bye bye.